Hey, what's up guys? How y'all doing? My name is Prince Mason. Welcome to the part two of the How to Retouch Dark Skin series. Today, we're looking at frequency separation. Um, the last video, um, I'll probably put like the link in the description below. We talked about how to process your raw images and I use Capture One, so I did all that in Capture One. And after that, now I brought my files into Photoshop or I brought my image into Photoshop where um, how I start is by doing frequency separation and taking out the blemishes and you know blending the skin tone making sure the image is looking really good before doing other things like um, dodge and burn and sharpening my image and you know like I'm um, fixing my skin tones whatever it is the first step I take is frequency separation so now let's get into frequency separation but before we do that if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and turn on the notification button so that you can receive notifications every time I put up a new video I try to put up two to three videos every week um, two of them are like educational and whatever <laughs> videos then the other one will probably just be a vlog from one of my photo shoots but anyways please just subscribe and let's get into this now frequency separation separates your image into two frequencies definitely two layers right I'm not going to go in depth into all that because I'm not really good at you know at all them mathematical things and all that and I just know it works for me and I know how it works for me so um, it creates the high layer and it creates the low layer so let's do that now so um, but what you do is you duplicate your background layer your image layer you duplicate it twice so let's do that um, that's um, Control J on PC command J on Mac right I use a Mac so if I say command and you use a PC then just understand that that's control I'm going to lim name the bottom layer low right that's my low layer. Then the top layer, I'm going to name it high. So my bottom layer is where my um, the whole um, information on my skin tones are going to be. While the top layer is where the information of my textures will be. So I'm going to um, uncheck my top layer. Then for the low layer, we'll go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and now. When you're picking the radius of your um, when you're picking the radius of your low layer, it's very key. Now I never thought it was key before, but um, or it was important before. I used to use the same value for all my images till I found out that it's actually really key for you to have different values for different images because different images you shoot them at like um, different lengths. So your megapixel count, you know. Um, Probably it stays the same, but your images, the sharpness of your images most times reduce when you actually move away from the subject. So the further you are away from your subject, you know, the less sharp your image will be, the, the less um, amount of um, texture you see in your image space. So when you're doing beauty shots, your radius might have to be high. And when you're doing full portraits, your radius will probably have to be low. So just keep that in mind. And this is what I found out though. It might not work for other people, but I think this this works so yeah now for this image make sure you know you find the radius that works that um, would take out all the blemishes so you are not going to see most of the blemishes or the skin texture in your image after you've you know worked on your radius now for this image I'll probably be using somewhere you know somewhere around 9 10 will work fine for this image so yeah so we're going to click OK now then we'll go to the high layer click the high layer Go to image, then apply image. Make sure the layer I'm picking is the low layer. My blend mode will be subtract. My scale is two. My offset is 128. Opacity at 100%. And I'll click OK. Then from here, I'm now going to, from my blend modes right here, I'm going to change this to linear light. I'll put this in a group. Command G, Control G on PC. Then I'm going to name it FS which is short for frequency separation. So basically this is your frequency separation um, group. This is like your frequency separation layer. This is what it does. The low layer right here has all your um, color information, while the high layer up here has your texture information. Yeah. Now we're going to go the extra step and create more layers in our frequency separation group. And what we're doing or why we're doing that is so that we in case there's a mistake, let's say we worked on our images and everything is perfect, then um, we found out that earlier on we made a mistake on our high texture and we've worked on our low uh, frequency layer and we do not want to delete everything. So we can just, you know, delete just the high tech, um, high frequency layer and um, duplicate it again 
and work on that layer without having to delete the whole group now if you don't understand what i'm saying is i'm going to duplicate this layer hold the alt or option button alt on pc option on mac and um, hover my mouse between both layers here and you see the clip um i think that's the clip mask option will come up then i'll clip right then for my high layer it's a bit more complicated i'm just going to zoom in and show you guys um so once we duplicate the layer um the high layer it, it becomes the textures become too too much you know then even after we clip it it gets worse so what we'll do is change our blend mode from linear light to normal so now we're going to be working on the copy layers of our high and low layers that way if there's a mistake we can easily delete right duplicate clip the layer go to linear light and change it to normal again without having to start frequency separation from the top now i hope you guys understand this if you do not just watch the video again and um, practice and do it the same way i'm doing it and you get you get it perfectly now some people the way some people work on their low layer is by adding more gaussian blur to it now i used to do that in the past and i found out that it just makes your image look fake and yeah it doesn't make it look extremely very professional and it flattens your image out and that's not what we're trying to do with this image we want it to look really great and want the images to look very professional we want it to be professionally retouched um there are a lot of professionals or there are a lot of people that frown on frequency separation and i think it's because they do not do it right you know some people prefer macro dodge and burn to frequency separation that's fine i just feel like it's whatever works for you at the end of the day the the thing that matters is the the end product you know how great the image looks at the end of the day so it's not it's not about what process you took to get to that point it's about how good the image looks at the end of the day now how i do my frequency separation is by using my mixer brush tool now i hope you guys follow the settings at the top i'm not going to tell you exactly what everything does but what i do is i set my wet to 30 i set my load to 30 your mix really doesn't matter for my flow i set it to 30. the reason why your mix doesn't matter is because we're not trying to mix um colors into this image but I think for just visual, I, I didn't know that before, but just because I always set my mix to a particular um, <laughs> value, I'm just used to living it at 30. I don't know, it just works for me. Uh, then yeah, then um, the I think the load option, we're going to untick that right here. You just untick this, then you take this. So this cleans the brush after every stroke. So yeah, don't forget to take that. Then we'll leave this at custom so this is what i do then i'll now paint into my low layer now try not to drag from your highlights to your shadows and you know from your shadows to your highlights work on your highlights and your shadows separately and work in between your highlights and your shadows because how you blend you know um from black to white um it, just just imagine if your shadows are black and your highlights are white now the only way to do it is to make it look um good or the only way to make that look good is when you blend white into black and you create gray in between it so there's a gradient that moves into you know that moves into the white from the black i hope you guys understand what i'm saying and that's what i do with my mixer brush tool so um unlike the normal brush tool where you have to sample colors and you know paint sample and paint the mixer brush tool automatically samples the colors around that area for me for you so you just you just paint with the tool so we're going to get into this now now as you can see i'm working i'm just painting gradually over my um my shadows in the image i'll just call them shadows maybe they're probably mid-tones but yeah just going to paint over this gradually obviously this will take um a lot more time to do uh, but I just want to show you guys quickly how I go about this then I'll probably fast forward the video to the end but so just little this little thing that I've done at the top now let's see the before let's see the after can you guys see the little smudges around the um, the head here on the left part or the right part depending on how you're looking at it it's, it's it's gone so just you know with a few clicks right then I'm just going to do this now just be very careful the way you use this because it tends to be very destructive and you would have to you know um delete your layer and start over again but 
Um, the more you practice, the better you get at it. So let's always put that in mind. So yeah, now somewhere around the nose here. Now I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to, like I said, you work on your highlights and you work on your shadows. I'm not going to drag my highlights into my shadows. I'm just going to work on both separately. Then sometimes I'll work in between just to create that um, gradual gradient um, between the highlights and, and the shadows. So that's the same thing I'll do around here. Just walk around the nose here. Now, don't forget that highlights and shadows actually shape your subject's face. So the moment you start mixing both together, you definitely will just destroy the shape of your subject's face. So always have that in mind. So yeah, right here with the blushes, I'm just going to work on that separately. Um, always try to use bigger brush strokes because um, small brush strokes tend to create, um, I don't know, some kind of effect that's not really nice. So try to work with big brushes. And you know, when you're working with an image like this, or when you're working with like a tool like this, make sure you're not all zoomed in because you'll not be able to see what you're doing. So try to zoom out and um, edit. Yeah, edit images while you're zoomed out. I think the only time I zoom into an image is when I'm removing like the blemishes and I want to see exactly what I'm doing. So I hope you guys understand how the mixer brush tool works now. And um, instead of making this video so long, I'm just going to fast forward this part and um, yeah, I'll come back when we're moving to the next stage. So yeah. Well, so guys, I'm back. As you can see, um, we've made a huge difference. Um, we've, we've, we've made like, uh, we've, we've moved forward. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. And um, I'm just going to show you guys the before and the after, as you can see, before and after. Now, the subject's face looks a lot smoother, like the gradient between shadows and highlights looks way better now, but we're still retaining the textures in the face. That's one thing. And our subject still looks great our subject still looks the same way you know we have not altered how she looks and um or we've not tried to we've not moved our shadows into our highlights in some spare in some certain places to make you know the image look terrible the image still looks almost the exact same way it looks but the difference is that we've made the um the gradient between the highlights and shadows a lot softer so that way the image looks the image looks um way way better now after doing this, some people do, some people remove blemishes before doing this, but I prefer to do this. I prefer to work on my skin tones before taking out like the textures or the, or working on my texture um, layer. So we're going to jump into the texture layer right now. And what I usually do when I'm in my texture layers, I use my clone stamp tool, which is right here. You know, that's just S on your keyboard or you just come right here and, you know, pick your clone stamp tool. I set my sample to current layer, you know, aligned, um, opacity 100%, flow 100%. And this, that's just how it works. So I'm just going to zoom in right here and start taking out the blemishes on the skin. So this right here won't work for me, right here. Then sometimes I, my hardness, I don't, I do not set my hardness all the way to zero. Uh, most times I use um, between 50 to 70. It depends because I do not want the edges of the brush to be so soft, you know, I don't want it to be extremely soft at the same time, at the same time, I do not want it to create artifacts, so yeah. Let's just take this thing out, so you can see all this, this tray here, right here, it's easy to take that out. Now, I'm not looking to make our model like perfect and all that, but just, you know, making some minor adjustments and minor corrections, so it's not good to over retouch the skin, I kind of learned that the um, over time you know from watching professionals retouch and if you look at magazines then you see that um, 
the people in magazines most times do not look perfect you know they just leave some certain things out probably maybe strand of hair or something just to make the person look normal you know so the person does not look like a doll so avoid doing that um yeah so i'm just going to keep taking the blemishes out with my um clone stamp tool now if you've never used the clone stamp tool before i probably forgot to tell you the way it works is you have to hold alternate or option sample the skin around um close to where um you want to sample the skin close to where you want to you know make the corrections then you know just sample here and paint over this sample and paint over this right okay that works i'm not going to take that out all the way because i don't want the image to look extremely big but you know, at that point it was just looking too much so right right here okay i would advise you know you follow these same steps because this is exactly why i do as you guys can see so yeah this is how i do my frequency separation obviously um, most sometimes I'm not just doing once in you know like um, while I'm editing like I do it a lot of times for a lot of things There are different reasons why you know you can use there are different ways or different things you can use frequency separation to fix You know it's not just skin and all that. There are like a lot of things I use it to fix clothes hair, you know so many things so frequency separation works for me in, in, in so many ways. So yeah, I hope you guys have learned something today I'm just going to finish up this image on my own and um, we'll move to the next stage which is going to be like the global dodge and burn stage so yeah so guys thank you for staying to the end of this video if you like this video kindly give it a thumbs up if you are not subscribed to my channel please subscribe and turn on the notification button so that you can receive notifications every time I put up a new video share this video with anybody you think will find this helpful and if you have your way of doing things or if this helped you out you know very well then comment below let me know let's continue this community of um, retouching and photography yeah <laughs> and um, yeah I'll see you guys in the next video which is going to be the global dodge and burn next week have a great day peace